the Prophet Muhammad, also known as Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Muhammad is the founder of the Islamic religion, obviously one of the largest religions on the planet in terms of the numbers of followers. Muhammad was born approximately in 570 CE in Mecca. Around the age of 40, Muhammad began having experiences that formed the foundation of his beliefs and the religion of Islam. Some of these experiences are clearly described in the Quranic literature. In particular, it is said that there are four signature things that Muhammad experienced that led to the basis of his beliefs and his activities as a founder of Islam. First, he spent time in a cave named Hira on Mount Jabal al-Nur near Mecca, and he did this for several weeks a year. And around the year 610, it is said that the archangel Gabriel appeared to him and commanded that he write down verses that would eventually be included in the Quran, the ultimate holy book of Islam. It is said that initially, Muhammad was distressed about the result of his experiences, and he worried what people would think about him and whether his claims would be dismissed by others. But it is also said that he welcomed the actual experiences. So that is the first signature element of Muhammad that ultimately led to his founding of Islam, his meetings with the subject that he says was Gabriel. But it is also said that Muhammad was taken on nighttime trips with the angel Gabriel to three special locations around the year 620. Now these trips are called Isra and Miraj, and he traveled on a winged steed. In Isra, Muhammad was taken to what he described as the farthest mosque. But later, in the Miraj, Muhammad was given a tour of heaven and hell. In the Islamic literature, there is a debate as to whether these trips were of a spiritual nature or whether they were actual physical events. So, we at Farsight are a curious bunch, and we use remote viewing to investigate all sorts of mysteries, and these reported four signature elements of Muhammad's experiences seemed like they were just the sort of thing we should add to our investigations. What actually happened to Muhammad with respect to those four things? his meetings with the angel Gabriel, and his three nighttime trips to the farthest mosque as well as to heaven and hell. So we took a look to see if they were real events or just fantastic legends with no basis in physical reality. Well, using the tools of modern remote viewing, we found out, and we found out a lot. So moving into subject B's mind, I'm trying to see what kind of information subject B is is giving to subject A's mind. So the content that I'm sensing that subject B is flowing into subject A's mind is very controlling. He he wants control. It's it's information based on based on controlling through subject A. He wants to use subject A to control other things. And through these, subject B will gain something. Through this, subject B will gain something quite substantial. I have a question for him. Because I want to hear. I, I'm asking if I can listen in to their conversation that is telepathic. Uh, the subject says yes. One subject, the calmer subject, the one that's just sort of sitting there and just relaxing and just letting all of this barrage of ideas come at him. He's being silent and patient, and he seems to be representing a side of thought that is conflict is not necessary while the other more engaged and heated subject seems to be arguing the opposite, that conflict is necessary, and that is sometimes a very necessary thing to do in their situation, whatever it may be. Behind the calmer subject, you can see natural light coming in from the cave. I'm going to deduct hell, because if there was a hell, this would be it. It, it. it feels terrible to be in here. And within, amongst these bodies that are just where subjects are taken to be brainwashed. They also then plant them across the world to do whatever they're gonna do. 
The subjects' minds are being scrambled. In the back of one of the teams, there's people with these big staffs, and these big staffs are, without actually making any motion, they're standing kind of like this. They're just standing very still, holding the staff next to them. However, this energy just goes up to the top of the staff, and it just rockets fireballs. It's like literally just standing here, and then fireballs are just going boop, 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 and it's just murking people. I'm saying like, when you get hit with one of these things, it's like, I, I, there's this one guy who I'm seeing, I'm gonna try to act it out, this one guy. He's just like, and then like, this, uh, this dude is, com is coming at him, and he's got a sword, and he's like, thinking like, I'm gonna slash him with the sword, and the other guy's like, got his own armor thing, he's like, I'm gonna hit you with this. Now, they don't even get a chance to meet. Fireball comes in from a wizard, way off in that direction, smacks the dude, and the flames just cover the whole person's body, head to toe, instantly. And it doesn't like, it's not messy, it, just, it sticks to their body. Some of these data suggest that Muhammad may have been kept in a special room in the non-surface structure that was designed to resemble the interior of his cave. It seems clear that he was not allowed to see the beings that were piloting the craft or even the high-tech sections of the craft. These meetings were used to convey information that was considered important, at least to the Gabriel subject and Muhammad. There is nothing in the results of this project that attacks Islam as a religion. The events that are much of the basis of the religion actually did happen, and people who follow the Islamic religion are free to interpret these results as they seem fit. Mm -hmm.